the attorney general of Minnesota, who after all is a politician, they run for office. So he should have stood up there and did a better job of explaining to people that all the law that he's got at the moment that he knows that he can get this guy on is that charge. It doesn't mean that that's not what he he wants to go higher, but he knows he can get him on this. But he didn't say that. So you stand there and you say something weak like that and people are upset. So it's just a failure all the way around. But I do want to say to young people that my generation did this one already and we paid big time for it. They didn't build our communities. We lived in rubble for 10, 15, 20 years. So this way. So your message to way. your message to write mm-hmm. to people writing right now in Minneapolis, you know, or in Louisville or New York is stay at home. Don't yeah, we do did this. this one. We did this one, Matt, and we paid. They didn't. The people we were trying to protest against didn't pay. We paid. So I'm just saying that you know we did this one, and it didn't work. Okay. But it's still deeply alarming to all of us um, that this violence continues. What is it here? I mean, is this about, you know, systematic institutional racism, you know, in American police forces? You know, is it about, you know, know, is it about things that the president may or may not have said of people misinterpreting signals coming out of the White House or perhaps interpreting them in the right way, um, but with the wrong results? What's going on here? Well, to be as kind as I can over the radio, uh, the president of the United States, the person in the office at present is the wrong guy. And that's the first thing. Presidents of the United States, usually, even if they're, <clears throat> sorry, Matt, even if they're being hypocritical, do the opposite thing that Trump does. Even Twitter had to censor him. So, you know, he's just the wrong person. Um, uh, the, the police well, forces of the United a, the, States. The tweet that they censored was when he said, you know, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, is, that's helpful, isn't it? It's a I line mean, so from the movies, to, frankly. Yeah. Well, they yeah. had to get, I mean, you know, he's just, he needs to sit down. The, the, the other thing, too, is that police forces in the United States are institutionally racist. They're set up to oppress minorities. And, and they do other things, too. I mean, I was part in the early days of Black Patrolmen's Association. And you should see what it's like being a black man in the police force. That's just as bad, too. So th- they're set up. Part of what they do is to keep people in, mo- in line and they keep ethnic minorities in line. The other thing I want to add, and I haven't seen a lot talked about, African-American people, and this is an unconscious thing in the society, we are assumed to have a lower pain threshold. We, I'm sorry, a higher pain threshold. We can take pain more. That's what people believe. And if you're a big, strong black uh, man, they think you can take it. That's built into the, 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 the sort of racist ecology. So if you put your, your knee on the neck of a black man and he tells you he can't breathe, he's just joking. And people, I, I've seen it, I've seen it, it's happened to me, and I'm not a big, tall black man. But, you know, black people assume we can take it. We can take pain. And so it's inflicted upon us. And that's the other reason uh, uh, what's happening. This goes back to slavery times. So this is the other factor involved. What I would say to young people is you have to protest. You have to make your voices heard. But don't burn down your own house. Mm. That's the most important thing.